This overhead video setup is a set it and forget it workflow for any heavy camera like a DSLR. Not only will you be able to film cool overhead shots, free your hands and continuously film without having to change batteries, but if you implement the technical setup I'm about to show you in this tutorial, you won't even have to remove your SD card to transfer your footage to your editing computer. Let's take it out. Hey name tags and welcome, this is Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. If you're new here and you want to build a better relationship with technology, consider subscribing and click the bell icon to join us on this tech journey. This is not a sponsored video, but you will find Amazon affiliate links to everything mentioned in the description below. Let's start with the main component of this overhead video setup, which is this heavy duty monitor arm desk mount from One Home. I bought it off Amazon for under £19 on a lighting deal. Normal price is £25 or $30 at time of writing. The installation was really easy as you are given three mounting options, one for a desk clamp setup like this and two types of a grommet base style install. The provided cable clips allow for decent cable management but what I found really interesting was this included additional clip holder for Allen keys. That's a feature I wish every manufacturer would include in their design. Over the years you end up collecting a bunch of Allen keys that you can't link to any furniture but this solves the problem. The monitor arms allow two monitors up to 27 inch to be mounted. You can easily adjust its height and the monitors can be rotated 360 degrees or tilted to your viewing angle. The reason I went with a heavy duty arm is to mount heavier cameras as many YouTube tutorials seem to only cater for lighter smartphones or simple point and shoot cameras. Another problem I've seen is that many DIY overhead frames are made from PVC or placed directly on top of the filming desk. The problem is that unless your desk is really stable and sturdy, any desk movement will vibrate and pass through to the camera, resulting in shaky or jittery footage. You don't want a setup like this and still have to go into post to stabilize your footage. So the key is to mount the camera away from the desk. I made this mistake first time round as I used this uh, other DIY workbench which I screwed into the banister. So I swapped the desk for this freestanding one and left a small gap to the banister. Problem solved. The desk in question is a modified IKEA Freddy workstation for which I did a review on the channel. Watch the video here. I removed the top, middle, side and bottom shelves to accommodate this overhead video setup. If you need a nicer looking background for your top down filming than your plain desk, you can always use something like this cut piece of wood effect vinyl obtained for free from a carpet shop to provide a base on top of the desk. You need to pick one which is not reflective so you don't have extra glare in your footage. I use one of the arms to attach this Canon EOS 650D DSLR. You can mount it directly onto the included screw mount for the monitor bracket but I had this little standard sized quarter inch male to female thumb screw from a different camera kit, which I used as an optional mount. I then attached a quick release plate from Andoa to mount the camera. Yes, I know this is going to be a permanent setup, so I'm not planning to remove the camera, but having a quick release plate is always handy. Now the whole point of a setup like this is to provide continuous shooting without needing to change batteries. So here I am using a compatible ACK-E8 AC power adapter for Canon and the frustration of stopping filming and dismounting the camera for battery changes becomes a thing of the past. On top of the camera I mounted a ball head hot shoe adapter to attach a microphone. Here I'm using the Rode VideoMic Go but I'm not recommending you get this model. There are some interferences issues with this particular model. A review on that is coming later in a future video. It's okay for reference audio and if you insert a better microphone on this ball mount then you could get better audio quality with either a sitting or standing posture. However, the advice is always to record your audio separately like into this Zoom H1 and then sync 
in post. But since you're so close to the camera anyway, the reference audio from the onboard audio from the camera should be good enough if you will record better audio separately. As for the lights, you can use anything really, provided you do not mount it parallel to the camera as that will give you light glare in your footage and if it doesn't ruin your footage entirely, it's gonna provide unwanted ugly distraction. Either mount the lights at an angle or on the sides. To the left, I'm using a standard light stand with four CFL daylight bulbs and to the right, this DIY LED cake pan light I made for £12 or $15, video link on the channel. Now this light is mounted on a microphone scissor arm with a 3 8 to quarter inch adapter to fit another ball head shoe that allows me to direct the light where I need. You have plenty of options for lights, even stick an LED panel light on a clamp like this and mount it onto one of the arms or even get a desk lamp. The monitor I'm using is a BenQ 1080p 20 inch monitor which I already owned. I initially thought it would be too big but it's working out just fine. Plus this will double up as my main monitor for other work when I'm not filming top down videos since it has three types of video ports at the back. VGA, DVI and HDMI. Now you could connect the camera to the monitor using a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, but I chose to connect the camera directly to a computer underneath the desk and use the Canon EOS utility app instead. This is far better than physically changing camera settings, but it's still within my reach to zoom in or manually focus if I need to. When I'm done, I can even choose to send the footage directly to a shared folder on my network to my main editing computer. This is far more convenient than removing the SD card and it's not too difficult to set up on a shared folder on the same network between two computers. Now, due to the way I position the camera, the flip out screen will show a 180 flipped video image and so will the EOS utility on the monitor. If it bothers you, you can simply rotate the image 180 degrees in the EOS utility when monitoring the video. But when you transfer the footage to your video editor, you will have to flip it 180 again to get it back to normal. This is not a huge problem for me, but you can always mount the camera with the proper orientation, which is what I did in my previous top-down filming area. Link to that video above, at the end, or in the description below. So let me know if you want a tutorial on this in the comments below. As a bonus, you could even get a dual hot shoe mount bracket and mount a second camera, like a webcam, and that will give you multiple filming angles at the same time. Alternatively, you could just do a standing position video by tilting the camera up without too much effort. There are only three minor gripes about this heavy duty monitor arm. One is that it's not a mobile solution, obviously, so you're pretty much stuck to one area of filming. So plan carefully before you set up. Secondly, it's not tall enough for some types of videos I may do in the future, like for bigger computer desktops, drop-down filming, or big TV repair tutorials. And thirdly, you cannot adjust the height of the two arms individually. However, these are minor gripes, and if you do have other needs, consider looking for more expensive models with more flexible mounting options. If you have a different setup to mine, check out this video for a different top-down filming I did in my previous place, and if you're looking for a microphone solution to improve the audio of your videos, I've also got you covered with this playlist down here. Remember to subscribe and click the bell icon and use my Amazon affiliate links and I will see you in the next one. This was Ash from Milmai Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. Peace out.